You project power across the Pacific. Returning just recently from Guam, the 90th Fighter Squadron, the Dicemen, and the 525th Fighter Squadron, the Bulldogs, and all the maintenance troops who support them welcome home. And when disaster strikes, whether a typhoon in the Philippines or an earthquake in Samoa, you're there delivering the relief that save, saves lives. So thank you, Firebirds. Today, we also send our thoughts and prayers to all those who, at this very moment, are serving on the front lines. They are, they are airmen from Elmendorf in every corner of the world. They're soldiers from Fort Richardson, military police in Iraq, the 4th Brigade Combat Team in Afghanistan, Fort Rich paratroopers are no strangers to tough assignments. A few years back, you all spent 14 months in Iraq. Yes. Now, they're working to bring stability and security to eastern Afghanistan, building roads and medical clinics, renovating schools, protecting the Afghan people, giving them a chance at a better future. They are doing a terrific job, and we salute them. But with services come sacrifice. All of you know this. You've made the most profound commitment a person can make. You've pledged to dedicate your life to your country, and perhaps give your life for it. Here at Elmendorf and Fort Richardson, some hand. They're airmen, like Staff Sergeant Timothy Bowles, who, when a comrade fell sick, volunteered to take his place on the patrol in Afghanistan that would end up taking his life. There's soldiers from the 4th Brigade Combat Team, like the husband and father who gave his life in Afghanistan last week, Specialist Julian Beresford, and citizens of this state, like Alaska Native Corporal Gregory Fleury. Raised in Anchorage, he joined the Marines and served two tours in Iraq. He loved the Corps, he loved Alaska, so much so that he carried the state flag with him everywhere. He was with him last month when he was killed in those helicopter crashes uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, a little while ago, I had the honor of meeting Greg's family, uh, Donna and Christopher, uh, and his grandfather, Albert. And I expressed the gratitude of our nation, and we thank them for being with us here today. Donna, <laughs> Albert, please stand. no words that are strong enough and no tribute worthy enough to match the, gra the magnitude of such service. But to you and all who serve, I say this. The American people thank you. We honor you. And just as you have fulfilled your responsibilities to your nation, your nation will fulfill its responsibilities to you. So as your Commander-in-Chief, here's the commitment I make to you. We'll make sure you can meet the missions we ask of you. And that's why we're increasing the defense budget, including spending on the Air Force and the Army. We'll make sure... We'll make sure we have the right force structure. So we've halted reductions in the Air Force, increased the size of the Army ahead of schedule, and also improved a temporary increase in the Army. We'll spend our defense dollars wisely. So we're cutting tens of billions of dollars in waste and projects that even the Pentagon says it doesn't need, money that's better spent on taking care of you and your families and building the 21st century military that we do need. I want you guys to understand I will never hesitate to use force to protect the American people or our vital interests. But I also, I also make you this promise. I will not risk your lives unless it is necessary to America's vital interests. And if it is necessary, the United States of America will have your back. We'll give you the strategy and the clear mission you deserve, 
We will give you the equipment and support that you need to get the job done, and that includes public support back home. That is a promise that I make to you. Yeah. And as you meet your missions around the world, we will take care of your families here at home. Now, that's why the First Lady, Michelle, has been visiting bases across the country. Go, Michelle. <laughs> your family is a priority for our family. So we're increasing pay, we're increasing child care, we're increasing support to help spouses and families deal with the stress and separation of war. And finally, we pledge to be there when you come home. We're improving care for our wounded warriors, especially those with PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. I want to salute the outstanding work you do at the hospital here on the base, including your new TBI clinic. Thank you for giving our wounded warriors the world-class care they deserve. We're funding the post-9-11 GI Bill. Because we want to give we want to give your families the chance to pursue your dreams. And we're making the biggest commitment to our veterans, the largest percentage increase in the VA budget in more than 30 years. So these are the commitments I'm making to you. Because you've always taken care of America, and America has to take care of you back. America's obligation to our military, as we saw this week, is a sacred trust that we are honor-bound to uphold. It's the sacred trust that brought a nation together this week around 13 battlefield crosses. It's the sacred trust that leads us to pause on that November day to give thanks for all those who served before us. It's the sacred trust that brings me here to say thank you for serving today Thank you to you and your families for all you do to protect this country we love. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, so there's the President of the United States wrapping up uh, relatively brief remarks at Elmendorf Air Force Base in Alaska on his way to Asia, Japan, China. He's got a big trip coming up. Kenny Crowley is here. David Gurrigan is here. Uh, it, it, it fits in with this pattern, the thrust of his remarks we've heard over the past few days. It did, well, but I think both Kendi and I sort of, whoa, uh, when he said, when he said, we're going to have your back. When we, if you go to Afghanistan, we're going to have your back. And then he went on to say, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to guarantee you public support back home. Now, he does not have the public with him on Afghanistan now. What he's really saying is, I've not only got to come up with a strategy that can succeed in Afghanistan, but as Kendi was saying earlier, he has beginning to recognize he's got a big job to do here at home.